Good morning and welcome back to the vlog. I got my nails done last night. It's almost Labor Day weekend, I can't even believe it. So I went for like a summer fall transition with this like peachy, rusty color. Um, and before you know it, I'm gonna be getting dark colors cause I always choose my nail color kind of according to the seasons. This morning I am headed to Home Depot to pick up some poplar face frame. So I've calculated what I need in 1x2s and 1x3s. I will also be getting a couple of 1x5s um, to finish the face of all of the cabinets we've put in. I also have a fun little surprise that I've added between last week and this week. I'm also going to get a few sanding blocks and some sanding tools. I've got a lot but there are a few small spaces that I can't get into with the orbital sander, so I'm going to need to hand sand. So I just want to have a few different options for that. And um, yeah, and then when I get home, I will show you what I added. Okay, so this is very weird. I've never seen this before, but you can get them by the linear foot, which means you can cut them all yourself. But I did not calculate the wood that way, so I think I'm gonna go to Lowe's so I can pick up exactly what I calculated. So I can see how the linear foot situation would work well if you had exact measurements or close to them, but I just took really rough measurements and gave myself some wiggle room because I didn't know exactly what I was cutting yet. So I feel like it's just, I'm better off getting the eight foot boards and that way I have wiggle room and if I want, if I need to recut or something, I have the extra that I calculated. So I will run over to Lowe's and see what they have and then we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is take a board down one at a time and check it down the line to make sure it's straight and it's not wobbly or um, it's missing any chunks. And that way I know that when I cut it and nail it up, I'm not gonna have any issues with alignment. Looking to make sure it's straight. because I need to do a little tidying up in here and out in the dining room before I bring more wood in. I think we're done with sort of like this initial phase so there are a lot of tools I don't need anymore or for a while so I need to do a clean out which I will do a little bit later but I need to get started with work now that I've got my coffee to uh, bring myself back to life. I really should have had this before I left but I was like trying to get there early so, going to get some work done, and then probably around lunchtime, I'll give you some updates. I will do a little bit of cleanup to prepare us for the next phase. I had like a sort of method to my madness, but it was just starting to like pile up and now that we're transitioning into the next phase of the project, I felt like it was a good time to just put some things away. I still need 
a surprising amount of these tools and gadgets and things, but uh, I vacuumed, I put away all the clamps, all the scrap wood I had, and now we've got a clean slate. So before we dive into face frame, I wanted to share with you the idea that just popped into my head the other day and that I immediately took action on. <laughs> if you've watched some of the past videos, you might have noticed that we had a decent amount of space above the top cabinets. On the left side, it was about just under eight inches, and on the right side, it's just under nine inches. So our shelves are level, but our ceiling is a whole inch off of being level from left to right. I didn't bring the cabinets to the top because one, when you get really tall with cabinets, it's really awkward and hard to get in there. Like imagine it being eight feet in the air and it's, you know, 18 inches deep. Things just get lost in the back of the cabinet. I would have to get a step ladder to get to it. I don't really need that much storage, so I figured I would build these in a way that's a little more accessible. Once I had all of our initially planned cabinets up, I was looking at that space thinking, I feel like there's a better way to make use of it. Originally, I was just going to kind of panel it and put trim up, but I thought to myself, probably because I was listening to the Harry Potter soundtrack at the time, which I do almost every single day, that's like my working music, Harry Potter soundtrack, Hogwarts Legacy soundtrack, Harry Potter ambiance videos on YouTube, just like that vibe. I thought to myself, what if I built some very short boxes both in height and in depth, and I DIY'd some wand boxes, and I tucked them in the little shelves so that it felt like Ollivander's wand shop. Oh my god. And of course, if you know me, you know I'm, I love all things Harry Potter. I love the story, I love the music, I love the game, I love it all. And I want this office to be like so freaking cozy that you come in here and you're just like, it just feels like a big hub. So I built the little boxes, which I'll show you in just a second. And my thinking is that like, yes, probably during like the fall and winter months, I'll put the little wand boxes in there. That will be a later video. Once we get to like decorating and things, I'll do a little DIY on how I create those. But it could also be this like rotating decorating space. When my friend Megan and I went to Skagit Valley this spring, we went to this greenhouse and along the top of the greenhouse, they had all these like two and three inch little terracotta pots lined up. And you almost didn't know what they were because it was this perfect pattern. But if you looked closely, you realized there were these little pots. And so like that could be a fun idea that I do in the spring. I mean, I just, I love that it's this tiny little space that we can swap out and rotate with various decorations for the seasons. I don't really change a ton of decorations for the seasons except for Christmas. So it's a small space that's, you know, easy to change up. And if I don't want to put any decorations in there, I can put a few books on their side. I can, you know, use it for something else. So anyway, long story short, I made some mini boxes. I put them on top of the cabinets we already installed. They're adorable and I'm excited to decorate with them. I have a couple of wands here, but these boxes are much longer. And while I love these and they're, they're like a really nice, like thick, durable box for these upper shelves I built, I think I'm just going to DIY with like some heavy cardstock. So it will give the appearance of the Ollivanders like shelves filled with wand boxes, but you know, obviously those heavier duty boxes are much more expensive. So you can see this is just the same width as the shelves below, but it's a three inch tall space. So really, really skinny. And then same thing over here, same width as each of these shelves, but just three inches tall. So I'll be able to stack like two or three boxes. I can put some like on top of each other, some side by side. We'll just do a fun little like variation, but very, very, very excited about that. The last thing I need to do before we can actually move on to the face frame is secure those little shelves I just built. And I also need to cut a panel that will go beneath all of these bookshelves on the right. The reason for that is just to create a double thick 
one and a half inch bottom so when i put the face frame on it it's perfectly flush on the top and bottom and there's no overhang it's it's more of just a filler piece than anything but i do still need to cut that so once that's all set then we are in a good place to start measuring and cutting face frame there are going to be some tricky parts about that because our walls are not straight we have pieces of face frame that will be right up against both walls so those will need to be scribed i had to create like some filler pieces and shim a few things out so some of the areas that are touching aren't exactly one and a half inches so we will need to kind of cut some custom pieces for that um, so it will be a little bit slow. I'm not sure if we will get to all of it in this vlog. I will try to at least start making some progress, but this will probably span over the next two weeks along with wood filling and caulking and sanding. It's, it's not hard, it's just really tedious and this is the part where we want to do it right because it makes such a big difference when you apply paint. If we take the time to pay attention to the details and do a good job, then painting will be the easiest part of this whole project. So first up, I'm going to go ahead and screw those upper shelves together. So stupid I was looking at the tape measure upside down so I read it as 56 and not 59 this was the last piece I had for this what do I, do? I did not have any more three quarter inch plywood at that length and width but I did randomly have a half inch piece of plywood so I can do two things I can either put the half inch up as is and have a little bit of an overhang underneath with the face frame, which would be fine. Or I can add quarter inch blocking, basically just take strips of quarter inch plywood, nail it to the bottom of the shelves, and then put the half inch panel up. That will create a three quarter inch drop, which will allow me to put my one and a half inch face frame on flush top and bottom. And I'm not sure which I want to do. <laughs> so first I'm going to see if my panel fits, then I'll decide which direction I'll go. Okay, so now I just have this clamped up here to hold it in place. I wanted to get like a sample piece of face frame and hold it up to see how I felt about the overhang and or underhang i don't know if that's the proper term but basically underneath here there's about a quarter inch lip edge but now that i'm seeing this i think that actually helps make it more finished if this is flush to the bottom i have this seam that i really need to make sure is perfect otherwise i'll see just like slight variations in where the face frame and the base panel connect but if i have a little bit of an overhang i have a little bit of forgiveness if it's not completely perfect and I'd rather have that. So obviously everything happens for a reason. That's why it's important not to panic. You can always pivot and there's probably a better solution anyway. So this is good. All I have to do is sand it down. So I did cut it a little bit deep because there's some fluctuation in the wall. So I need to sand it down so that it actually fits perfectly and then attach it and we'll be good to go.
All right, another plot twist. <laughs> I only have one and a quarter inch screws, and because we are not using double thick three quarter inch, which would make one and a half inches thick of material, I only have one and a quarter inches of material. If I countersink these screws, which means I sink them into the wood so that I have a little like hole that I can wood fill and cover, then they would go through the top. So what I've done is I've glued this panel to the boxes above and then I've clamped the front and screwed in a few different places, not sinking these all the way in, but just enough to hold the panel up so that the glue dries and adheres the panel to the bookcases here. Once this dries, I will take the screws out and the clamps off. I might go get one inch screws or I might just leave it. It's just a panel to like cover things it's not really functional and since it's half inch not three quarter inch it's a little bit lighter too i'll think about it i'm not too too worried about it i mean glue is pretty strong but i've already put a million screws in this thing as it is so what's a few more um, either way these screws will come out these clamps will come off and then i will just finish sanding down the front to be flush with the bookcases and then that's it that's all we have left before we can start measuring and cutting face frame. ready for the new beans that I planted to grow. I ended up just sticking in some extra bean seeds that I had down in the basement and I really didn't have any hope. I was like, meh, if they grow, they grow, if not. And I'm telling you, in three days they had sprouted and the few little shots I showed you are all of the new sprouts that are just shooting up out of the ground. So I am crossing my fingers that we actually get a late bean harvest if we have a mild winter. So that was exciting, um, but it felt good to get that all cleaned off because it was looking very dead and sad. The trellis is a little bit like bent, so I'll have to figure out how to like bend it back into place. So it's a nice even arch right now. It's a tilted arch, but that's not super important. That's just me being very particular. <laughs> I'm actually going to make up a little matcha latte and before we dive back into office progress again, I did want to share with you that it is Labor Day weekend, which means there are some great sales. And if you're like me, you love to save money and you also love Christmas. And I know that sounds absolutely crazy. Now, one of my favorite greenery lines is the Norfolk Pine from A Floral. They typically sell out long before the holidays, definitely before the Black Friday sale, but over the last few years, that same line has popped up at other stores. So lots of other places sell a very similar looking product. I just bought some from Michael's. 
um, but I also saw it pop up in a number of other places including Amazon so keep an eye out this weekend if you need to restock or add to your greenery for the holiday season coming up um, now might be a good time to buy I also found some really really cute mini cedar wreaths from Hobby Lobby they were like $2.99 or $3.99 each and I'm going to use those to hang on our interior doors, maybe on like the stools or the dining room chairs. I haven't decided yet, but at that price, I literally could not pass it up. That's it for my Christmas decor PSA. I will include some links to the things that I just mentioned or that I purchased so far or in the past have purchased in case you're interested. I said I was gonna make a matcha latte, so that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go out to the car and bring in all of the wood we bought earlier this week because it's been sitting out there and we need to start cutting some of it down for face frame. Okay, we have all of our wood inside, and I think to start things off, I'm going to focus on the bookshelves here first. My goal is to get these all covered with face frame this week in this vlog, and that will give me a little more time to figure out the face frame for the cabinets. The cabinets are a little more particular because those will have doors on them, and if I do decide to do inset doors, they have to be perfect because if any of my measurements are off, and I build a door to fit inside of that, it might not fit. This is less precise because it's really just making it look pretty. We're not covering it with anything, so if it's not perfectly perfect, I can fill any of those imperfections with wood filler and things like that. So, that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to measure and cut the face frame for the shelves first. Those are just wall to wall inside of each box, and they'll be glued and nailed in place. And then we'll start working on some of these longer and outer edge pieces and go from there. Before I actually do a measured cut, I'm just going to trim off a little hair from the end of the board so I have a perfectly flush and smooth end to measure from. Sometimes these are a little bit rough and then when I butt it up against the wall or another piece of wood, it's not going to be perfectly flush. and anywhere I can minimize gaps and things, it's going to make my filling and sanding job easier later on. really quickly with the sander just so it's nice and smooth some of these edges are just a smidge rough so I can't really like put the face frame up nice and flush so I'm just gonna sand it and then it'll give me a nice smooth surface to adhere all of these two okay now they're a little bit smoother and what I'm going to do is take my wood glue and I'm going to Use my finger and smear some glue on the front of the plywood here. And then I'm going to shimmy my face frame in place and I'll use my nail gun, my 18 gauge nail gun and shoot one and a quarter nails in to hold it in place.
lost a little bit of light, but look at that. It's so coming together. I had to scribe this piece on the right here. And I haven't done this top section yet because I'm gonna do a taller piece on the top to bring it up to the ceiling. And I think I'm gonna wait to do that until I have all the cabinets done as well. So I can do that as one big section. Up close, you can see all these little nail holes that I will need to fill. And then also at the seams, I will need to add a little wood filler there and sand it all down so it's nice and flush. Some of these, this one got like a little tilted, but that's okay because we'll sand this high spot down. All of these like crevices will get caulked down them. So if you see any little gaps, those will be filled up. So lots of like finish touch up work to do before we can actually paint so that it has a nice finish to it. But the face frame is all up. That went a little more smoothly than I was expecting. I had a few back and forth cuts where I like cut it a little bit too long and then I needed to shave it off, but I'd rather it be that than cutting things too short, which I didn't do this time. Shocker. <laughs> so like I said, I think this is all I'm going to do for this week. I'll save the cabinets for next week because I have a little bit more thinking to do on those. I am going to start wood filling on this side because I'm going to need to do a couple of rounds of it and I can't caulk until all of the wood filling is done and sanded. So I will start that, hopefully get that done, you know, this weekend. And then next week we can focus on the cabinets and get all that wood filled. And then maybe, maybe the week after, mid-September, we'll be in on to paint. I don't know, soon. I still have to figure out colors and things, so maybe next week we'll also look at some swatches and start to decide on color so we can get some sample paint and see what we like. <laughs>